Hello, we're speaking with Mark Sanders from MAS Design. And Mark is a designer of many well-known products. Welcome to this interview, Mark, for the Creative Thinking Tools for Success course. Hi, Peter. It's good to see you again. And uh, very excited about talking about uh, the things we both love, uh, design. Great stuff. Could you tell us a bit about what you do? Well, basically, if I'm at a party, I usually say I'm an inventor, but then regret it straight away because people say, oh, I've got a great idea. Why don't you do this? So if if I'm uh, more serious, I say I'm a combination of an engineer and a designer. And how did you get into being an engineer and designer? Wow, quite interestingly, at school, um, I was I, I was shown engineering is is a really good place to be but I wasn't shown much about design and uh, I did engineering uh, I managed to scrape into uh, Imperial College with uh, very bad grades but uh, seemed to get on okay and uh, was sponsored by a, a part of Rolls-Royce um, and um, had a fantastic time I really enjoyed it but I felt when I went back to Rolls-Royce that the the products they made, that sort of pumps, turbines and diesels, were not really human scale. And so I, I moved to another company. I went, actually went to Mars. <laughs> Mars, the company, rather than Mars, the planet. And uh, they did vending machines. And what I learned there was the concepts were actually developed by these magical people called consultants, design consultants. And I thought, I want to do that. And so um, I, I actually went for an interview to go work for them. And they said, well, you, got, you can come and work for us. And this was um, IDEO, which in those days was called Moggridge. And they said, but if you've got an opportunity to go to the RCA, that might be an even better option. And this the was RCA right at the start. is the Royal College of Art. Royal College of Art. And this was right at the start. I think I was about the third in intake or second intake of the industrial design engineering course, which um, basically allowed grubby uh, fingernail engineers such as myself to join the elite of the RCA. And it was a bit, bit of a backdoor entrance in a way because it's really hard to get into the RCA if you are an industrial designer or an artist, but it was relatively easy to come in as an engineer to try and absorb this completely new field of industrial design and concept development. And, and honestly, that was the turning point in my career. It was the best so, decision Mark, I've made. You've been involved with so many designs over the years. Could you tell us about a couple of the designs you've been involved with? Yeah, funny enough, one of the first ones was actually my major project at uh, the RCA, which uh, an Imperial College, which is still in production. It's a combination of, um, it's a bicycle, a triangular frame bicycle called the Strider. And it was actually the result of the two colleges wanting something that worked in engineering terms and also for aesthetic and human reasons. And a bicycle combines the two perfectly. And to be honest, there hadn't been much development in the last hundred years. So I thought, well, yeah. and I was commuting at the time from uh, Windsor into, into London, so it was a perfect project. And um, not only was the RCA and Imperial a really good platform to launch it and, and get some outside kind of uh, investment, but uh, it, it also allowed the product to go into production and um, it's still in production now. That's amazing. That's so that's one. Give us another yeah. one of your products. Oh, okay. Well, there's a whole series of products. Um, uh, what the common factor amongst them all is this combination of engineering and design. I, I, I like, and the word that sums them all up are they have to be elegant. In other words, they have to work from an engineering point of view and also from an aesthetic point of view. And elegance is a wonderful word because it, it, it's got meanings across arts and science, maths and engineering. Um, and it's basically simplifying things. So for example, I'll give you an idea. One of the projects I did was for um, a company in Hong Kong that make kitchen equipment. And they said, we want something that automatically just opens initially cans and then later jars. 
but we just want it so automatic that you just press one button and it does everything else. Is this Which the was, One Touch? Brand? This was the start of the One Touch brand. And the that was a fair enough challenge, simple engineering challenge, but with the added kind of like requirement that it had to cost under ideally two US dollars complete and it had to work completely automatically and uh, it had to look really good to sell in millions and it had to be, you know, award-winning potential because they they needed a product to kind of launch their their uh, their company, and That's and that went into production and actually achieved those goals. And uh, there are still versions of these products out there. Yes, funny enough, actually, that original one has been copied and copied. To, so, I mean, uh, uh, all I can say is that I hope it influenced the market in the right direction because can openers before then were horrible kind of bent bits of metal, which with lots of sharp edges and, and you know, made to be stamped out of steel. And, and whereas this one, by comparison, is like a smooth kind of egg shape, which gives a totally different aesthetic and makes can openers kind of warm and cuddly. You can even hold one against your face and it wouldn't scratch you, you know, which is part of the, the design aspect. You know, it's not just a question of making something functional, but also making it attractive and elegant, using that word again. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And what idea, what, or what ways have you seen for enabling good ideas to emerge and flourish? Um, I think what I learned at the RCA was very important, was that um, it's, engineers tend to come up with really great solutions and ideas and things, if they're asked to, but they're, they're very shy and very humble about promoting them. And what I learned at the RCA was a valuable lesson, was that um, it's not necessarily about promoting yourself, um, is promoting the idea and promotion is actually okay. So in other words, getting PR and getting the product or the message known across many medias is really important to get it out there. And from that knowledge of it, um, that's where things can move forward. For example, investment or um, winning competitions or generally getting into the market. It's becoming more and more difficult these days, because anybody with a, a computer and a mouse, and especially a bit of, uh, you know, um, say for example, Blender software can do a, a pretty nice rendering of some product that may or may not exist. Um, and getting you know, the PR message above the kind of noise of everybody else's PR is also quite a challenge. Uh, and, and, and I think it's a challenge for everybody. Um, but uh, those skills from the RCA really help with that challenge. That's brilliant. So it really sounds like communication of your ideas. So having your ideas and then communicating your ideas. Yeah, ex exactly. Um, and also making sure that the ideas actually are have value to the world. I mean, um, you, you know, the real benefits, not just uh, a Me Too product with slight and tweaks. In your daily routine, I mean, you're... You're, you're just active in the design world in your do you have a daily routine that you um that you I don't you you know gets you into good state to start work or if you get stuck you know to do something um good question um I'm a really slow starter actually you know I tend I did some of my best work is actually at nine at night when I should be thinking of shutting down but I'm really slow in the morning but to actually kick off those ideas, well, how I tend to work is immerse myself in an area. Uh, and in, in particular, um, I, I really like um, having one or two really meaty projects on at the same time, so that if one gets a bit stuck, I can go on to the other. Um, and then that having a break, I find, from a project that's got a really knotty kind of multi-dimensional problem in it having a break from that clearing your brain to think about something completely different and then coming back to it often really helps along with I, I, I seem to do a load of nerdy research about whatever I'm working on um so I you know I think Dyson used to call it the Zulu principle you know if you if you 
make your field of research narrow enough, you can go in super deep. And um, I agree with him completely on that. Um, I love researching stuff in a very narrow but deep way. Okay, Mark, that's really insightful. Thank you so much. The last question, what ideas do you think the world really needs now? Two, two things, if you allow me, Peter. The first one is energy storage, in particular, electrical energy storage. There is enough energy from the sun and the wind to power the world probably eight times over. You know, the patch of land on the on the uh, Sahara Desert to power the world is, is, is tiny, okay. The snag is, it doesn't, it, you know, the sun stops at night and the wind stops when it's calm. So the missing link is storage. And that can be, I, I, I'm storage agnostic. It could be by pump water, it could be by, you know, chemical batteries, it could be by, Kinetic, kinetic energy, I don't care, but storing that energy, which we have in abundance, will just kill having to burn fossils, which I hate. Okay, and the second thing is um, throughout my career and everybody's life, I think, transport is probably, you know, after what's um, the hierarchy of need, you know, you need people, you need air, you need food. And I would say the next one, you need transport to be able to meet people, get around and do things. And so zero carbon transport would be my, my second thing for the world. Um, well, Mark, you've got a whole portfolio of inventions behind you. I can see that uh, we may be seeking your attention to these two problems in the near future. Mark, thank you ever so much for joining us today. That's fine. Really enjoyed it. Nice to chat, Peter. Take care. Thank you very much. Okay. Great. Was that I'm going to stop recording.